Are you going to sit down? No, I'm going I'm to face this way. <laughs> Listen from behind. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. We'll get started, start on time, quit early. That's the mantra. Come on in, folks, thanks. Well, once again, uh, thank you for being here uh, today. We are uh, revisiting a, a very important theme for the university. Um, we introduced the topic to you uh, at our orientation, uh, in August. Uh, it's now getting very close to crunch time. So we're going to get a little bit more specific and talk more specifically about what's going on. First of all, um, what's the phrase that Hillary used to use or somebody used in, in politics? It, it takes a village. Um, I know that's a, a little corny and all of that, but uh, Institutional accreditation really does take everybody in the room. Whether, whatever your position is, you, you have a fundamental and operational role in getting this institution re-accredited. So I, I want to emphasize the, the importance of uh, teamwork and unity. And October 29th and 30th is not the time to be uh, talking about uh, areas that we can get better at, but more than likely, it's a time to talk about uh, honest answers to straight questions that they're going to ask us uh, when they're here. Uh, we have a small leadership team that, that has been uh, doing a lot of the work. Uh, we also have a, a, an AQIP committee that, that does a lot of the work uh, relative to quality initiatives. But the, the small team includes me and uh, Scott, and, I'll, uh, and uh, where's Ah, Judy's right there, and um, Jay, where's Jay? Mr. Assessment is right there. Actually, his name isn't Mr. Assessment, it's Bobby Hull. And for those of you old enough to remember the Chicago Blackhawks and Bobby Hull, he's sitting right there. <laughs> he thinks he's a hockey player. Anyway, let's, uh, let's go on. Our agenda today will be relatively short, and believe me, if there aren't any questions, we'll be out of here in 20 minutes. That would be my guess. Update on reports to the HLC, update on tentative agenda for the visit. I have, I have their, their schedule, and I'll show it to you, because uh, I want you to highlight the, the parts that you'll be involved in. Uh, we'll have a few questions about criteria and possible questions, and then an open question and answer period. And again, uh, if there are no questions and it's really silent, uh, the meeting will be over. So you'll be in charge of, the, of how long the meeting goes. Uh, just the team, uh, I got some great pictures. There's Scott. Judy. Wow, Judy. There's Jay, Bobby Hull. And then, oh, how did that get there? Excuse me. I don't know how that got there. But there it is again. <laughs> Five out of six years, national champs. That's all I got to say. OK, here we go. Um, again, uh, the team will be arriving Sunday night, Sunday afternoon, Sunday night on the 28th. They'll be on campus for two full days. And they'll be departing sometime Wednesday morning. I've been on. Uh, 25 or 30 of these visits uh, in my time in higher ed. And usually Wednesday morning, we have the car running <laughs> as we deliver the final report to the president. And then we get off campus as quickly as we can. <laughs> I don't think that'll be the case for us, but mark those days, Monday and Tuesday, the 29th and 30th. Uh, they, they will be conducting officially a quality assurance review. That's what it's called because we're equipped. We are uh, an institution that has um, 
emphasize quality improvement, and all the language around the self-study and the review is around this quality assurance idea. In fact, the report that we're giving to uh, the Higher Learning Commission isn't called a report, it's called the highlights, right? Jay, is it quality highlights? Yeah, it almost trivializes it to me. But anyway, that language is all gonna go away because AQIP is going away and, and we won't concern ourselves with that until the team is on the road and they're gone and then we start thinking about uh, how we get reaccredited next time. Okay, in terms of things that we're providing to the team, the, the, the first thing will be uh, what we call the highlights report. And I've, I've just tried to summarize a few of the things that are in the highlights report for you. Uh, uh, obviously, there, there, there's big talk about mission. We are a technology-focused STEM university. Uh, federal compliance is now a, a report that's up to 27 pages long. And you owe Jay Call a big thank you because he's done all the work. And, and I want to tell you, the federal compliance report is a real pain. It's detailed. Um, it's just no fun. So thank you, Jay, for that. We appreciate it. Uh, we have a section called Indicators of a Quality Institution. And w uh, these aren't all of them that are in the report, but, but, but we've indicated things like financial stability, an increase in, in uh, entering test scores, uh, the success that our students have in employment. And if you looked at the latest data, um, we're talking about placement rates uh, right around 100%. Um, sometimes we get to 99.9 .9 and then it's 100.1, I don't know about that. Uh, we've had uh, two successive years with Goldwater Scholars. That's nothing to shake a stick at. That's pretty exciting. Not many universities can say that. Uh, the Summer IT Academy we highlight, we and highlight we also highlight the enrollment growth. Uh, I think Friday is census date, so we'll begin to hear how the state of South Dakota is doing in enrollment. Um, I don't have the specific numbers, but I do know that uh, Dakota State University will once again be up. I'm just not sure how much. Um, it, it's looking pretty good. Research and grant success is there. Um, then we go on to highlight several things that happen are, or are happening in the university, our mission decision, uh, mission driven decision making process and the implementation council, which is now um, uh, still only a couple of years old, but the, the, the implementation council um, uh, used to be the planning council and we ch just changed the emphasis just a little bit so that we're, we're talking about getting things done, uh, implemented in other words. Uh, we talk about our online programming uh, the planning processes again. The Title III project, which Judy is, is leading and, and it's beginning to show um, some of its uh, strong points. Uh, systems portfolio and our action projects. These are HLC items. Um, the systems portfolio was the review that was done for us last year in anticipation of this visit. And I think you've heard the story. I, I, don't, I don't wanna bore you with the details, but we didn't really care much for the report. We thought it was poorly done. And uh, a combination of efforts of Scott and me and, and Jay, we went to Chicago and, and we said, nope. We, first of all, we don't think the report's very good and we don't think the team is doing very good. And normally that would, that, the team that wrote the systems portfolio report would be the team that comes to campus. And we said, no, that can't be. We need a new team. Our liaison put together, I think, a pretty good new team and we're, we're excited about that. Uh, continuous improvement, uh, general education and the Center for Teaching and Learning and Quality Assurance. Uh, a couple of these are relatively new initiatives, very important initiatives, I, I, I might add. Uh, I know a lot of us groused about quality assurance and, and having to do the work, but the point is we have to be able to say and demonstrate that our educational efforts, particularly the online educational efforts, are quality controlled. And, and that includes things like um, proctoring exams and all of that. Co-curricular programming is always an interesting thing because uh, it represents unique challenges in assessment. How do you assess uh, the university's progress in its co-curricular function? And you need to know that the, the co-curricular function is an expected function of a four-year university. So what do we do there? The accreditation pathway is going to change. There's some other things that we're developing 
Um, every team member is going to get a flash drive with the report on it and, and relevant documentation on it. Um, we're going to create a Dropbox where all, all the, the documents, in the old days, we used to have resource rooms. Some of you have done, who, who've done accreditation. You, you had resource rooms and you put all your documents in big binders. And the team would come in and would look up whatever they needed. Now, those days are gone, everything's electronic. Uh, so, so we will have a digital Dropbox for them to, to peruse uh, documents. Uh, uh, we've, we've got at least one common PowerPoint deck. We'll, we'll have another one available for anyone who wants it. Uh, we will have a website up and, uh, by next month. And newsletters have been coming out. You've been getting little snippets of information about criteria and, and questions, and that'll continue right up until the visit. So lots of stuff going on. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about the schedule for the on-campus visit. And, and I'm going to go through this and spend a little time with this. And, and I apologize for the size of the print, but I wanted to get it on one slide. I'll, I'll just talk about it uh, so that you can see. And, and, and you might even take a note or two of when you might be involved, because some of you serve on, on, a, on some, many of these committees. Uh, it starts with a, a meeting with, with President Griffiths, and then uh, the cabinet will be invited uh, after they meet with the president, and we'll, we'll, the cabinet will come in. And then I think the first major meeting is, is on strategic planning and the implementation council right away Monday morning. There's a campus tour involved. There's a little bit of transition time. And you, you'll see the schedule is broken out by criterion. There are five criterion used for accreditation, and you have to meet all five of them. There's no exceptions. You can't meet four out of the five and be an accredited institution. So what they've done is, is uh, they've broken it into criterion, and they will look at specific functions of the university relative to criterion five. Criterion five is the resources criterion. That's where they ask questions like, do you have enough money to run your programs? And so on. Do you have enough faculty? Do you have uh, dollars to support this, that, and the other? Uh, Stacy will be heavily involved in that. Uh, criterion one is, is the mission. Criterion two is, is integrity. Those two are often viewed together. Then the first significant external meeting, uh, meeting with external constituents, I should say, is at noon on Monday, and that'll be a lunch with regents. And uh, that's a meeting that is coordinated and orchestrated by the president. That's, that's, a, that's a high level executive meeting that, that will occur at that point. Um, another transition time. Uh, th they'll have time to talk about the federal compliance report. They will have read all of Jay's 27 pages of work, and they may have questions. Uh, you never know. And uh, that'll be the time when we do that. Um, student advising and student support, shared governance and distance education. These are all topic areas where th they will be seeking people in this room to come visit with them about that area. And all of those assignments will become much clearer as we get closer. And we, we know we have to have someone in there about uh, uh, one of those topics. And it might be distance ed, it might be shared governance, whatever it is, uh, the team chair will tell us. Then Monday afternoon is the first big open forum. And this will be for students right here. And uh, we're, we're, we're making a little extra effort to try and involve our online students as well. Um, student Senate, certainly, and student clubs and organizations will be invited to attend the open forum. Um, but we, want, we, we would really like uh, some of our online kids uh, to be there and express their opinions. And then the, the, the team does some discussing. Uh, you might say, well, what does that mean? Faculty file review. What is that? Well, what happens is the team will assign a person, a member of the team, and they'll send them to the provost's office, and that person will randomly select faculty files and go through them, looking for whatever. Uh, irregularities in process, um, uh, integrity of the data, all of those things will be examined through a file review. They'll actually sit down with, with the files physically. Uh, okay, that's Monday. We'll be pretty tired Monday, but then comes Tuesday. Uh, again, 
Uh, one thing we didn't put on here is uh, they'll, they'll meet with the president first thing to, uh, Tuesday morning. It's kind of, here's what we heard, here's where we're headed, uh, and they'll brief her. They won't brief any of the rest of us, but they'll brief, brief the president. Then we have an assessment of student learning and a CQI leadership committee meetings. Again, here's criterion three and criterion four. These are the academic criterion, I like to call them, cri criterion three and four. Uh, that's where, where you really hone in on teaching and learning and teaching resources and all of that. And, and uh, obviously they will have uh, specific requests for people. And then the, the noon hour uh, on Tuesday is a team lunch with alumni and community stakeholders. And that again is on the president. Uh, she, she'll be selecting uh, community members and, and other uh, relevant people on the team to, to meet. Uh, moving into Tuesday afternoon, uh, you may want to write this down. Uh, uh, we, we'd like as many staff as possible. There will be an open forum. There will be a, a team member leading the forum, and uh, they will ask you questions about the operation of the institution and, and, and look for your response. That's the staff open forum. At the same time, but in obviously a different location, there will be a faculty open forum. Same thing. One of the team members will run it, and they will solicit opinions from the faculty, okay? That's at two o'clock on Tuesday. I think you should all mark your calendars. Uh, a little bit of extra time here, a lot of extra time here. My experience is there will be no extra time because they'll be running late and there, there won't be. And then uh, there is the exit meeting, which really has two parts. They'll sit with the president and, and tell her the whole thing, and then they'll invite campus leadership in. Uh, uh, the, uh, those people that'll be invited in will be, will, will be the decision of the president. For me, uh, I've done it many, many times, and there's never any extra time. These meetings are, these days are just jam-packed with information. Whenever you can, uh, we encourage you to participate, whether you're a committee member, you know, like you're on uh, uh, Implementation Council or one of those, or if you go to the staff open forum, or you go to the faculty open forum, or you encourage your students to get involved, which is a good thing. Please know that, that your participation is not only welcome, it's needed. They need to hear from you. I mean, they don't need to hear from me or Dr. Griffiths. Uh, they need to hear from you. Okay? That's the two-day schedule. Committee, anything I've forgotten, Jay? Um, I have to talk to the provost about that. But, but I would really appreciate that we give students an opportunity to go. And uh, I don't know if that's a class cancellation or, or some kind of special provision to be made, but yes. Yeah, 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 that, that's right, Jay. And uh, even at that time, we'll impact some students. You know, because there, there are lots of things going on in laboratories and so on in the afternoon. Other questions about the schedule? Grandma? Would there be a way for our students to participate remotely in the forum? Yeah, that's the piece we're trying to work out. That's it exactly. We, we want the remote students right there. So, Stay tuned. We're going we're gonna to create a methodology. Uh, we, we tested a, a methodology in D2L because uh, I needed to have our faculty hooked up, and it works. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm not surprised. It works. We, we should be able to do that. Same thing with remote faculty. Same thing. You had a question. So, 
sorry. Yeah, we were talking about whether we should call a meeting of the whole campus to tell you what went on after we had that last meeting. We decided we'd rather call something the following day and just give you, you know, a quick overview of what was said. We won't actually have the report that comes in a bit later. Mm -hmm. And we don't actually get reaccredited until sometime many oh, months later it, it'll be, when there's it'll an be annual meeting. But we can give you the basic feedback that we get at the end of the meeting. So rather than leave you hanging there saying, well, we, went, we spent time on this. We have no idea what the result was. We'll give you a, a, a clue to that on the Wednesday. Good. Thank you. Other questions on the schedule? Dan? It, it is. I didn't say thank you for reminding me. Uh, it, it does include graduate students. We don't have a separate time for grad students. We'll just have to have it in there. And then will it flow like the Board of Regents schedule where they say come at 10 30, but it's actually the meeting between 9 30? Not much float. There isn't going to be much float. It's going to be. Yeah, yeah. I. I it's, it's hard to predict team behavior. It's a little bit like trying to predict a search committee's behavior. You don't know what's going to happen. And I don't know what's going to happen, but again, in my experience, th these deadlines are pretty hard and fast. Yep. Even assistant professors get 15 minutes. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Now, full professors, we, you know, but yeah. Yeah, good question. Others? Okay. What do you think of that picture? That's, that's Dakota State. 1913. Uh, let's see, oops. Jeez, these buttons. That's TCB, right? This? Beetle? That's, that was Kennedy, right? And this is East Hall. That's the heating plant right there, in just case you're wondering. But pretty neat, huh? I found it. I thought I'd put it up here. OK. We wanted to give you a taste. I wanted to give you a taste, this won't take long, but just give you a taste of, of questions, the kinds of questions that, that team members would ask. So here's one. The university clearly, well, this is an expectation. The university clearly articulates its mission through one or more public documents, such as statements of purpose, vision, values, goals, plans, or institutional priorities. How does DSU ensure the mission documents are current and capture institutional focus? Well, we created an answer. Thank you, Jay. Uh, uh, Jay put these together. I really appreciate it. Uh, but here's our answer. Please memorize this answer. <laughs> an annual review is conducted each year by the Implementation Council President's Cabinet to gauge progress toward target goals and ensure adherence. That sounds really tough, doesn't it? Ensure adherence. Uh, it's a university. We don't ensure adherence. Anyway, uh, all goals and objectives across the university are recorded in Achieve It. That's a little software program that, that Jay has. That I find personally very annoying because it, it keeps reminding me that I haven't done something. <clears throat> Jay. Uh, regular review of the action items are indicators of progress uh, toward guiding the mission. DSU also conducts a campus-wide strategic planning process. By the way, guess what we're going to be getting into? the next strategic plan. It's coming uh, because uh, I think ours expires next year. Yeah, 2020. So here we go. Get ready. That, that's, that's, what, that's one from Criterion 1. Uh, the institution provides academic advising suited to its programs and the needs of its students. They actually check things like that. How are students advised at DSU? Now, if you're a faculty member, you might easily get asked this question. And the students might get asked this question. I don't know. Uh, we have a traditional faculty advisement program right now, and we also have the, the positive influence of Title III, where we have some professional academic advisors providing 
uh, work in arts and sciences and, and in the Beacom College. The Center for Teaching and Learning is currently developing a module on best practices for student advisement. Center for Teaching and Learning, by the way, is, is, uh, is doing a couple of really important things, so uh, keep your eye on that. Uh, another question. Um, the institution assesses achievement of the learning outcomes that it claims for its curricular and co-curricular programs. This is one of the main questions that they, they typically ask. How does DSU assess curricular and co-curricular programs? The large majority of assessment comes through the Assessment Coordinating Committee, and some of us are members of that, right? Yep. The group recently added representation from Student Affairs to lead the co-curricular programs. Student Affairs is currently undergoing a self-study by the Council for the Advancement of Standards as they review national standards and current practices. Co-curricular assessment is a difficult kettle of fish. Um, uh, academic uh, program assessment is hard enough. Co-curricular is even harder, in my view, in, this, in my experience. Curricular assess assessment occurs through programmatic accreditation, program review, and the ongoing review of tech exam and gen ed assessment procedures. Um, however much you, you hate getting the reminders from Jay and others, uh, we do monitor student progress quite well here. And one more, just for the fun of it. The institution links its processes for assessment of student learning, evaluation, and operations uh, that should be, uh, links uh, all those operations, including planning and budgeting. Oops. Yeah, these buttons, they, they confuse me. How does DSU integrate planning, assessment, and budgeting to align with its mission? mission? DSU is integrated as planning. You, you can read it. You need to memorize it. So anyway, uh, I'll send it to you so you can learn. But um, one of the things that committee members like to ask is, is there a relationship between what you do and how you spend your money? Uh, in other words, um, are planning processes set up on campus so that uh, you're funding thematic priorities with appropriate kinds of appropriations and, and financial support? And, you know, I, I think the answer to that is a firm sometimes. Uh, and, and then other times it isn't quite so firm because we're not, we're not sure. It, it, there's always lag with these kinds of decisions. But anyway, what's the link between the activities of the business office with the provost's office and institutional effectiveness and assessment? That's a, that's a very important relationship. And it's one of the things that we wanted to highlight as an example of the kind of question that we're going to get faced with when the team shows up. Okay, enough. What questions do you have? Anything? Concerns? We need students participating. We need faculty participating. We need staff participating. We need administrators participating. As you saw from the schedule, um, there, there will be opportunities for you to do that. We encourage you to take advantage of those opportunities. Any concerns? Only if you know the secret triple handshake. <laughs> the, then you can have a copy. Yeah, no. It's all going to be posted. And there's still some tweaking that will go on with the schedule just a little bit. And uh, as soon as we have it completely firm, uh, that's why we have to have a, a place on the website where you can get information. And it'll be there. It's public. There's, there's no secret about it. But the triple handshake is important. Triple secret handshake. Anything? There we are. Phone numbers, email addresses. If you have concerns, questions, problems, please don't suffer in silence. Let us know so we can facilitate this visit. This visit is very, very important. And, and, and I, 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 I'm not a strongly opinionated person, as you, as you know. <laughs> but uh, I don't think this is about us l losing accreditation. That, that isn't what this is about. Because we're not, they're not going to take accreditation away from a 113-year-old traditional four-year university. That ain't going to happen, especially given our success. 
But what is important is the viability of the monitoring and the vision. And one of the things I like about being here is the vision, is, is that we're, 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 we're looking forward in our programs, in our degree patterns, um, and all of that. And that's what they really are interested in assessing, not whether we're going to be accredited or not. I don't think that's an issue. There are the four names. Uh, you're welcome to let us know if you have questions. I really think we need to be in this together. This isn't the time for the lone wolf. This is the time for the, the team to come together. Uh, uh, one of the things I like about athletics is, is it, it, it teaches you some very basic lessons. If you want to compete, you first must prepare. You have to be guided in that preparation. And then once you're prepared, you have to execute. And that's what I'm asking you to do. Prepare and execute. Get the job done. If we don't have any questions, that's it. 30 minutes. I thought that was quite efficient. You don't get to ask a question. OK. OK. Yep. We're going to invite a commitment this week to get a bit earlier to the team, so there will be more requests. I apologize for those in advance, and I appreciate the way the state responds to that. We keep up to this point, and uh, yes, absolutely get this done, and reaffirmation is available. Yep. So, what makes the best advice? Yeah, I want to echo, echo Jay, um, and thank you for, for your help so far. And, uh, and now we, we execute. Okay, we've prepared, now we execute, we get her done. Thank you all.